Hi everyone. This is the second lecture for the chapter cell. In the last class, we discussed what is a cell, then how it was discovered, who is the father of cytology, what is cytology, and finally we also discussed the cell theory. Okay. Um, so basically, this is how uh, the hierarchy is seen. Okay. You start with the smallest. A possible unit which is an atom okay um, smaller than atoms are subatomic particles like proton neutron electron okay and even uh, smaller than the protons and neutrons are something called quarks okay but that is all included in physics then you have molecules which are made up of atoms different atoms a study of atoms and molecules is all considered chemistry. Finally, different molecules make up organelles and different organelles, they come together and make cells. Cells are the building blocks of life and they are the smallest living things, okay? The smallest living unit um, would be cells. Different cells come together to form tissues uh, tissue is a group of cells uh, which does some specific function. Okay, then such tissues they come together to form organs. Organs come together to form organ system. Just think of your digestive system, right? So digestive system is made up of multiple organs. It includes your stomach, it includes pancreas, it includes intestines, mouth, buccal cavity, teeth, all of those. Different organ systems like nervous system, circulatory system, digestive system, all put together, they form an organism. Okay. Many organisms of the same species form population. Then population uh, of different organisms. Okay. Uh, for example, let us say there are some cows, some buffaloes, some sheep. Then all together they form a community. Okay community that is all living organism okay living organism living population plus the abiotic factor makes ecosystem a large ecosystem is called biome and the whole earth is called a biosphere okay so this is the hierarchy this is how you study what we are focusing on in this chapter is just cells fine now we already discussed what is a cell what is it made up of Today we will be discussing the types of cell. There are two types of cells, prokaryotes or eukaryotes. If anybody gives you any cell, okay, any living organism, you can always classify them in either prokaryote or eukaryote. Now let us understand the name, okay, pro. Wherever you hear the term pro, it means first, okay, pro means first. So, prokaryote, karyo means nucleus. Okay, you have uh, heard of this, this uh, term, especially in cell cycle and cell division. You have heard of term karyokinesis, right? If you have not, wherever you hear the term karyo, it means nucleus. Okay, nucleus. Okay, pardon my handwriting. Um, right, so prokaryote is before nucleus was properly formed. Okay, so these cells, they do not have proper nucleus. Okay, right. So here what you see is a bacteria. There are um, two types of, what you can say, uh, prokaryotes. You can include bacteria and then there are archaea. Fine. So Monera and Archaea, you would have heard of this in five kingdom classification, right? So here is a cell, a prokaryotic cell. It does not have a nucleus, so prokaryote. Then you have eukaryote. Wherever you hear the word eu, e it means modern, okay, advanced. So eukaryote means advanced nucleus because here you see the nucleus has a covering called nuclear membrane. Clear? The major differences are this. There is no nuclear membrane or nuclear envelope. 
surrounding the DNA in prokaryotes, while in eukaryotes there is a membrane surrounding the genetic material or DNA. Fine. Then in eukaryotes there are two types of cells. There is either a plant cell or an animal cell. The plant cell has something known as cell wall. Okay, so that is how it is different. It has a cell wall which is the outermost tough covering and then it also has chloroplast which are the organelles which uh, perform the function of photosynthesis. So plant cells, you know, can photosynthesize while animal cells are these, okay, the ones shown on the right. They do not have a cell wall. They directly have a cell membrane. They also lack in chloroplast. They do not have chloroplast. So they cannot do photosynthesis here. But the common thing in both is they both have enveloped nucleus. Okay, they have a nuclear membrane, sorry, here. They have a nuclear membrane and in, uh, in that nuclear membrane, your genetic material or DNA is enclosed. Fine. Now, one doubt or one mistake that uh, students make is they consider that because it is prokaryote, okay, only some students make this mistake, but just to clarify, just because the name says prokaryote, that does not mean they do not have DNA, okay? Their genetic material is DNA, it is not RNA, fine? RNA is seen only in some viruses and those viruses are called retroviruses. Otherwise, all living organisms have genetic material um, as DNA, clear? Very good, chalo. So let us study what are the components of a cell, what all organelles or uh, membranes make up a cell. For a cell, we have studied that why Robert Hooke named it a cell because it looked like a room. In a room, you have a wall, right, which is made up of bricks. So even in this cell, you should have a wall, you should have some boundary which will separate the cell from its surrounding. Okay, it should have something that separates it from it, it from its environment. Fine. So that is boundary. Typically, in a plant cell, the outermost boundary is called a cell wall. Fine. Outermost layer, outermost boundary is called a cell wall. Cell wall is seen in plants, then in bacteria and fungus. In plants, the cell wall is made up of mostly cellulose. In bacteria, the cell wall is made up of peptidoglycan. Okay, I hope you are writing this down. And in the fungus, the cell wall is made up of chitin. So, even though it is called a cell wall, it is different for different uh, organisms. Okay, for plant, bacteria and fungus, it differs. Then beneath this outer boundary, under this outer layer, you have an inner boundary which is called cell membrane. Cell membrane is made up of lipids and in lipids specifically phospholipids. Okay, so this phospholipid cell membrane is seen in all living cells, whether it be bacteria, fungus, archaea, um, or your plant cell, animal cell, any cell you take has a cell membrane. Cell membrane is also known as plasma membrane. Okay, the same thing. Then let us talk about genetic material. Genetic material is DNA, fine. Genetic material, hereditary material, it all means the same. Okay, um, it is membrane bound. Membrane bound, it has an outer membrane which uh, protects this inside uh, DNA which is present inside. Okay? This membrane bound nucleus, this organelle is called nucleus, is seen in eukaryotes while prokaryotes lack nucleus. Okay, Prokaryotes, which is the bacteria, they do not have nucleus. 
then whatever extra filling you see here okay the cell has organelles it has nucleus it has outer boundary but what is present between all these organelles and uh, boundary so it is nothing but a semi fluid like structure it is actually jelly like structure which is called cytoplasm okay and this cytoplasm is where all the cellular activities take place okay, all the cellular activities a lot of metabolism takes place in cytoplasm clear then division of labor that is a cell has to do a lot of things right it has to synthesize proteins it has to generate atp then it has to uh, make different kinds of chemicals and transport a different kind of chemicals so basically it is doing a lot of tasks fine just think about uh, your school okay or your uh, class um let us say one floor okay on that floor you have five different classes there is one class for lkg okay or uh, kindergarten then you have one class of fifth standard two classes of seventh standard and one class of 12th standard now if these classes are not divided then just think about what a chaos it will make lkg students 12th standard students uh, fifth standard seventh standard all of these students together will they be able to study no right so to divide them so that they can do their proper work this is called division of labor so in cell also you see this division of labor specifically in eukaryotic cells they have membrane bound structures that prokaryotic a prokaryotic cell lacks okay these eukaryotic cell has membrane bound okay so there is a membrane present outside a membrane bound structures um, which prokaryotic cells do not have these structures are called organelles clear there are different kinds of organelles the blue colored organelle you see here the dark blue colored which is present very close to, to the nucleus is called endoplasmic reticulum okay endo means inside plasmic means inside cytoplasm reticulum reticulum literally means net jhad okay um, so that net web or jhad jhad is a gujarati word uh, so that reticulum is the net okay so here because it is forming such kind of a structure so it is called endoplasmic reticulum you can see it is uh, surrounded by membranes okay it is made up of membranes you see here and inside the membrane protein synthesis and other functions take place then you have this light blue colored uh, part which is also smooth endoplasmic reticulum so you have rough and then you have smooth the green colored portion you see here is the golgi complex its function is to pack okay it is like an amazon facility or a flipkart facility think of all the parcels coming in so they have to pack all the parcels and then send them through courier right so this is golgi complex is like that amazon facility and it is packing all the proteins and um, transporting them out of the cell or wherever they are needed then you have lysosomes lysosomes are like um, soldiers okay but for the cell when the cell needs protection or when it needs to digest something lysosomes come in handy then you have mitochondria the powerhouse of the cell which you see here this is the mitochondria uh, without slicing it okay how it looks like and this is after slicing it you can see it has in folds fine and then micro bodies micro bodies are nothing but they are small parts of endoplasmic reticulum the next organelle we will study is ribosomes the red colored dots you see around this endoplasmic reticulum small dots can you see so these are ribosomes they are um, organelles which do not have a membrane 
okay they are the only ones which do not have membrane not the only one but for now the one which do not have membrane they are found in all cells they are found in plant cells as well as animal cells um, and bacterial cells apart from these cells they are also found in mitochondria and chloroplast uh, we will study later on that mitochondria and chloroplast have their own ribosomes okay then animal cells specifically for animal cells they have another organelle called centriole or a pair of centrioles which are called centrosome which is shown in yellow color here so the centrioles are um, important during cell division okay they uh, give out the spindle fibers which will help separate the chromosomes okay so these centrioles are uh, also without a membrane they do not have a membrane and they help in cell division centrioles are absent in plants okay they are not present in plants so this is the basic overview of cell these are the things you will see in a cell obviously few things will, will differ from cell to cell as we discussed prokaryotes will not have organelles eukaryotes will have organelles even in eukaryotes there will be differences plant cell will be different and animal cell will be different right so this is what we will be studying in uh, the chapter further on now we discussed what a cell is what it is made up of now let us discuss the size of a cell how big is it how big is a cell so even here you see a lot of variation variation is diversity okay differences you see a lot of differences um, these are facts which are important and some of them are given in your textbook others are just important um, and they are actually fun to remember also so here the longest animal cell okay longest longest meaning lengthwise um, lengthwise the longest animal cell is neuron in giraffe neuron is your brain cell right a cell of your nervous system basically so this neuron of a giraffe is more than one meter long okay it is more than one meter long then the longest plant cell this was about longest animal cell the longest plant cell is remi fiber from uh, this remi fiber is from the uh, what you can say a plant whose scientific name is bohemia bohemia sorry bohemia nevia bohemia nevia this here is the plant and the long thread like structure you see is one cell okay and that cell is how much how long it is 21 inches long okay 21 inches long uh, for the people who have 20 inches or 24 inch uh, waist you can imagine you can wear this one cell as a belt right so that is how long this cell is remember the name is rami fiber and from the species bohemia nevia okay this rami fiber is very much similar to the uh, fibers you get from jute have you heard of jute you get jute bags right or jute uh, strings so they also have long plant cells but the longest one is from bohemia nevia then longest human cell if somebody asks you which is the longest human cell it is a neuron which is one meter long okay it is a motor neuron which starts from your spinal cord okay you have your spinal cord here right so from the spinal cord this neuron starts and its exon will extend till the foot okay till your leg ends so this long neuron is one meter long okay and it is the longest human cell this was all about longest lengthwise how about size so the largest animal cell is an ostrich egg okay can you see how big it is this is one ostrich egg these are the dimensions which are not important but just for your reference they are about 17 centimeter um, 
and 13.5 centimeter across okay length and breadth so this is 17 centimeter and this is 13.5 centimeter that is how big they are so this is the largest animal cell which is egg of ostrich largest human cell okay or the largest cell in human body is an egg egg cell and this egg cell is 0.1 millimeter while the smallest cell is a sperm can you see here this small blue colored cell is actually a sperm and you can see the difference in the size right so the largest cell in human body is egg and the largest uh, cell in uh, sorry sorry smallest cell in human body is a sperm clear now uh, my question for you is homework why is this egg cell so large why are eggs egg cell across the species you will see they are always bigger in size so why is that so i will give you a hint it has something to do with embryo development okay it has something to do with embryo development or division seen in embryo fine we shall discuss next time if you cannot find the answer now the largest plant cell is called acetabularia acetabularia is actually an algae and what you see here is just one cell can you imagine this is just one cell it has a lot of nucleus okay it has a lot of nuclei plural so this uh, will also be an exception for the cell theory okay we studied exceptions last time so acetabularia is also an exception how large is this cell it is 10 centimeter long can you imagine it is 10 centimeter long from here till the stalk if you measure it is 10 centimeter long so that is how big this cell is so that is our largest plant cell smallest cell okay across all these kingdoms the smallest cell is mycoplasma mycoplasma are also known as pplo or pleuro pneumonia like organism mycoplasma and pplo are one and the same okay mycoplasma or pplo pleuro pneumonia like organism they are 0.1 0.3 micron long okay they are that tiny 0.1 micron it means 10 raised to minus 7 meter okay micron is 10 raised to minus 6 meter and 0.1 micron is 10 raised to minus 7 meter so the smallest cell is mycoplasma or pplo let us see on this scale First, let us see the textbook diagram. Okay, this is the textbook diagram that has been given. Whatever the values are mentioned here, these values are important. So just remember these. Okay. The diagram on the left is for understanding, and the diagram on the right is for remembering. Fine. So typical eukaryotic cell will be 10 to 20 micron big. Okay, a normal eukaryotic cell will be 10 to 20 micron big the cells like neurons that we discussed which are one meter long are exceptions okay and they are not considered typical so you do not mention them here a typical eukaryotic cell a normal cell uh, let us say we remove from your liver or from your skin or from your buccal cavity will be 10 to 20 in my 20, 10 to 20 micron long or um, that big okay then bacteria how big are the bacteria so if you remember this eukaryotic the 10 to 20 bacteria are 1 to 2 okay just remove the zeros so eukaryotic cell is 10 times as big as a bacterial cell okay bacterial cell karta das ganu motu cha eukaryotic cell that is what is meant by this so 10 20 micron if you remember for eukaryotic cell remember 1 or 2 micron for typical bacterial cell that is how small they are now if you remember one or two micron for bacterial cell 10 times less okay divided by 10 will give you 0.1 micron so 0.1 micron 
is how big the PPLO is or mycoplasma. Okay, mycoplasma, the smallest living cell is 0.1 micrometer. Now reduce it again by 10, you get something similar to 0 0.02 or 0 0.2 micron. Okay, so PPLO is actually a little smaller than some viruses even. Can you see? If a virus is 0.2 micron big, then some PPLO, which are 0.1 micron, they are smaller than virus. That is how small they are. Only some. So viruses can be 0.02 to 0.2 micron in size. This is according to your textbook. These are the values you have to remember. On the left is the scale of different uh, things. Let us see. Here you see virus which is 0.05 to 0.1 micron. Then you have mycoplasma which is just a little big than the virus. It is 0.1 where the virus is ending 0.1 to 0.3. Then you have a sterile filter. Okay. Uh, in different labs, in different scientific study, you require sterile water or sterile media. So for that, if you filter them out using such kind of filters, I hope you already uh, know about the filters you see at home, right? RO filter or normal UV filter. So they have these membranes and the membranes have small holes. When water or any other solution is passed through these holes, only smaller particles will be able to pass. The larger particles will remain above. Fine. So if you, you are using a sterile filter of 0.3 micron, mycoplasma and virus can easily go through. They are smaller than 0.3. Fine. Then you have bacteria which are 1 to 10 micron. According to your textbook, 1 to 2 micron. Then yeast, slightly bigger than uh, bacteria. And um, after yeast comes a typical eukaryotic cell which is 10 to 20 micron big. Okay. And here um, at the bottom you have been shown that what you will require to see these. Okay. So to see a eukaryotic cell till bacteria you will require a light microscope. The one which we studied last time. Okay. Compound microscope. But to study mycoplasma, viruses or subcellular organelles you require electron microscope. Clear? Fine. That was all about shape of cell and we saw, uh, sorry, size of cell and we saw there is a huge variety in sizes. Now let us move on to the shape of a cell. So the shape of a cell also has a lot of variety. It depends on the function they perform. Okay, what kind of task they are doing, what kind of function they are performing. Depending on that, their shapes will be different. For example, they can be disc shaped. Uh, think of your RBC, okay, red blood cells. Red blood cells are biconcave and almost disc like, saucer like. Fine, so that rakabi is disc like. Then you have polygonal, you know hexagon, pentagon, right? So gon means corners, polygon means has many corners. So polygonal cells are mostly the cells you find in plants. Okay, so here are mesophyll cells shown. Mesophyll cells are seen in leaf, okay, leaf um, and they do the uh, photosynthesis. So mesophyll cells are polygonal. Then you have columnar, columnar meaning their length is longer, I mean length is bigger than the breadth, okay, or the width. So the width is small, but the length is large. So such kind of columnar epithelial cells also you might have studied or you might have heard of. If not, we will be covering them when we study animal tissues, okay. Then you have cuboidal cells, cuboidal cells are cube-like which have all length, breadth and uh, width, all three of these almost equal in size. Then thread-like, okay, thread-like you can include some neurons which have the small uh, thin exons or in case of plant cells you can use a tracheid as an example. Tracheid is a part of xylem, okay, and xylem does the uh, task of water transport.
if somebody asks you in any plant cell which is the longest cell the answer will be tracheid okay or the cell from your xylem and some cells are irregular they do not have a proper shape example is white blood cells um, then also amoebo amoeba or any amoebocytes um, meaning they do not have a proper shape they can take any shape fine so these are the shape of a cell now we end today's class here we will just discuss a few questions which have been asked in previous years exams or which will just brush up some things okay i hope you uh, you have started solving the questions from this chapter okay and as we move ahead you will be able to solve more and more of them right so let us begin with the first question who proposed the cell theory the answer is very simple because we just learnt it in the last lecture the answer is shielden and schwann okay uh, shielden who was the botanist and schwann who was the zoologist now let us say you do not remember that exactly who gave cell theory what will you do so the second approach will be cancelling other options out okay so let us start with the bottom robert hook yes you have heard of him in the chapter cell but what did he do robert hook was the one who found out the cells from a cork okay so no he was not the one who gave the cell theory but he was the one who gave the name cell okay not cell theory then option c is mendel and morgan if you have studied inheritance and genetics then you know mendel and morgan are actually geneticists they have something to do with genetics right gregor johann mendel and morgan t morgan uh, mendel worked with sweet peas and morgan worked with flies so no they also did not give cell theory watson and crick watson and crick were actually the scientists who found the structure of dna so no they also did not give cell theory so what option is remaining the option is shielden and schwann okay this was just an example of how sometimes you may not remember exactly who gave this theory or who gave this statement but you can use this cancelling method of eliminating okay um, like if you uh, go to kbc okay or if you have just watched that show kon banega karodpati you know there is a lifeline where you can remove uh, two options okay 50 50 so you start by doing 50 50 and then see that which two options uh, are remaining and then which is most likely to be the answer clear yeah? fine the next question here the answer was shielden and schwann next question is which of the following is exception of cell theory now remember we have studied all the exceptions of the cell theory i hope you are reading with us okay as as much as i am teaching you are reading at home so the exception of cell theory is virus bacteria is a cell it follows the cell theory fungus also then lichen um lichen is the symbiotic relationship between algae and fungus okay and then finally virus because virus is not a living thing until and unless it enters a host okay which is why it is not um, included in the cell theory okay it is not a proper cell it is not a proper living thing difference between prokaryotic and eukaryotic cells is in having cell wall nuclear membrane ribosome or none of this what is the difference between prokaryotic cell and eukaryotic cell the answer is nuclear membrane okay nuclear membrane is only seen in eukaryotic cells it is absent in prokaryotic cell who proposed the theory omnis cellula a cellula omnis cellula a cellula the literal translation of this statement is cells arise from pre-existing cells can you know which one it is 
Mole, Varcho, Heckel or Brown? Very good. The answer is Varcho. Okay. The next question. The branch with which deals with the study of cell structure and its function is known as the branch which start which studies the cell structure and function. So the options are histology, ecology, morphology, or cytology. Histology is study of tissues. Ecology is study of different population, different uh, ecosystems. Okay, so ecology is there after organism till ecosystem or biomes. You study ecology. Morphology is study of structures, how a particular cell or a particular organ or an animal looks like. So the study of how it looks like is called morphology. And the final one is cytology. I had told you last time, C-Y-T-E, wherever you hear the term cyte, it means cell. Okay, So cytology means study of cell. So answer is D. Which of the following forms more than half of the cell? The answer is water, mineral, protein or carbohydrate. You are correct. It is water. Water makes about 60 to 70 percent of a cell followed by protein, then carbohydrate and then least amount is of minerals. Clear? Which of the following has its own DNA? Which organelle has its own DNA? Mitochondria, dictyosome, lysosome, peroxisome. The answer is mitochondria. Only mitochondria and chloroplast have their own DNA and also have their own ribosomes. Fine? The main area for various types of activities of a cell is plasma membrane, mitochondria, cytoplasm or nucleus. Main area, playground, okay, where all the activities take place. Where is that? Which area is that? Is it a plasma membrane? No. Not every reaction or every activity happens at plasma membrane. Is it mitochondria? No. Is it cytoplasm? Yes. So cytoplasm is where all the cellular activities can take place. Okay. All the organelles are also present inside the cytoplasm. So um, it is where the uh, activities, okay, cellular activities take place. Here we end today's lecture. Oh, we have a few more. How many are there? Okay. Fine. Let us just continue. Sorry. I thought I was done. Anyway. So the longest cell uh, of plant is found in the longest cell, longest plant cell, okay, not the largest, the longest is found in Victoria Amazonica, Eucalyptus, Bohemaria Nivea or Sequoia. Now if you know Eucalyptus and Sequoia are actually the names of trees, okay, Eucalyptus literally means Nilgiri. Okay, the, the, uh, the smell that you get from Vicks vapor rub is actually because of eucalyptus. Nilgiri no tail or Nilgiri you would have heard of. Then Sikoa are also long, very tall um, plants. The answer is Bohmeria nivea, which we just studied in this class. The next question, the smallest living cells with cell wall. See, it is important to read every word and understand what they are trying to ask. The smallest living cell with a cell wall are viroids, algae, bacteria, mycoplasma. Viroids are just infectious RNA. Then algae, um, they have cell wall, but they are not the smallest. Bacteria and mycoplasma. One thing I forgot to mention here was Mycoplasma, PPLO, lack cell wall. They do not have cell wall. They are exceptions in bacteria and they do not have cell wall. 
So the answer here is bacteria. Bacteria are the smallest cells which have cell wall. So we end today's class here. I hope you had fun. Okay, next time we start with the prokaryotic cell. Keep, um, keep just uh, solving different questions and we will meet next time.